First we need to open the basic bodice with front dart open and then we're going to save this as, so hit file, save as, because I don't actually want to edit that pattern, I want to turn it into a different pattern. Um, so we will call this, let's just call it um, princess seam dress, oops, wait a second, let me type. <laughs> okay. Princess, there we go, seam dress, that was weird. I'm um, going to hit save, and now this is a new pattern. We need to import all the measurements from our skirt into this so we can basically combine it. So we're going to go into measurements, and we're going to hit edit current. Now, I don't actually want to edit this one as it is. I want to turn this, use this to make a different one. So I'm going to hit file, save as, and let's call it the exact same thing, princess seam dress, save. Perfect. All right, so now we need to add the extra measurements that we need for the skirt, and some of them are already in here, which is great. So, like, the high hips are already in here. Um, I can't remember for the hips in here. Let's check. I don't think the hip is in here. It just goes down to the high hip, but it's helpful. The waist and the high hip are already in here, so we just need to add basically the hip measurements and the, um, like, lengths of the skirt. So, we are going to, in another tab, so I'm going to open a second set of this. Um, let me see if I can do this an easy way. Open individual. That's not going to let me do it. All right, on the bottom of my screen, I am going to open a second seam leave me. Um, when you download this program, it's going to put seam leave me on your desktop or wherever you save it to. So just open the seam leave me a second time. There we go, because I want to look at this. I'm just going to open individual, and I'm going to hit my A-line skirt, but I want the one with darts. So it's probably basic skirt with darts. There we go. Open. Perfect. <laughs> All right, so now I'm going to just kind of look at these next to each other for a second, just to actually see which measurements I need to add. And it is literally just the hips and like the waist to hips and ankles. So that'll be pretty easy actually. <laughs> Let's hit um, in our screen that we're making our new one, hit add custom. And I don't know why I said that, definitely not custom. We're gonna hit known measurements. We're adding known measurements here. I'm gonna scroll to the bottom because I think it'll add them down there. Let's hit add known. Um, we don't need height, width, indentation. Oh, I'm gonna close all these down. We do need these circumference ones. We need hip circumference so g9 we need hip arc front g17 and then we're going to need hip arc back which is g33 and then i need i can come back to this one to check all right waist to hip oh yeah we need waist to hip front and back so that's going to be in our verticals so let's see i'm just going to click on these so i'm seeing some bottom half measurements La la la. This one's still got. Oh, here we go. All right. So waist to hip front, H31. Waist to hip back, H34. And then I need the leg measurements. So I'm going to close that. I don't need a horizontal, bust, balance, arm, leg. This is what we need. I need waist side to ankle, which is M12. Oh, no, that's crotch to ankle. I need waist side to ankle. Oh, it's the next one. M13. And then I need that to the knee to M14. Cool. So that's not too many we need to add. Um, I'm going to keep these next to each other just so I can see those measurements. And hopefully it put them all down here. I think it did actually. That's great. All right. So hip circumference. Um, just go down here to the formula and type that in. And then hip arc front. The back one's going to automatically calculate off of the front one because it has math in there. Woohoo! Yay for math. Waist to hip front is, let me see that, waist to hip front, 35. Back, oh, same thing, cool. Ankle, I'm going to delete all that math and just type in my measurement. Delete all that math, just type in my measurement. Cool. Let's hit save and this is ready to use.
And in here we have to go back to measurements and we need to load the new measurements. This still has the old measurements in it. So we need to load, what do we call it? Princess start, princess seam dress. There we go. So open, new measurements, cool. We're gonna start, go to your pattern pieces, go to the bodice front, and now we're gonna add the skirt. Um, so what I'm gonna do is we kind of have to connect this into that princess seam and then we want it to curve out into a nice pretty skirt which will be so nice um okay so on our shoulder we kind of want to see if we can get this angle to match up into the shoulder into a nice seam um so we're gonna go point it distance along line and actually let's do the divided by two one just to see how well this goes. Start at the outside shoulder, go to the inside by the neck. Let's just see what that looks like in half. That's yeah, a little too far and let's try by three. Okay, I'm gonna go to the curve and I'm gonna see if I can connect that. I'm gonna go one, hit the top of the dart, two, curve of the dart, three, bottom of the dart, four. Actually, that's pretty nice, I'm okay with that. Um, and then we need to connect it on the other side. So I'm going to do a curve again up at the shoulder, up at the top of the dart, this middle part of the dart, and then down. And we're losing quite a bit there. So what I'm going to do... Um, okay, so now we need to connect this down into a beautiful skirt. So the first thing I want to do is go down to the length of the skirt that I want. And like this is the waist, but I need to add the hip and everything. So point, let's start at the waist and go down to the hip first. So angles to 70. Length is going to be waist front to hip. Mm -hmm -hmm. Waist to hip front. There we go. Okay. Hit okay. And now I need to come to the right that far. Angle zero. And the length, we're going to say hip, arc, front. There we go. Divided by two. Voila. Okay. Then we're going to decide how far over we want this to come. So, um, But we want it to kind of come out a little bit. So what I'm going to do is put a point right in the middle of those. Well, I guess I'll just do it from the center dart. Okay, and then we're going to go to this line, connect a line, and I'm going to go from the bottom of the dart to that center spot. And then I'm going to do the same thing on the other side because I need this measurement to be that wide. So if they start at the same point, I don't have to do a bunch of math to figure out how much space I'm losing here. Um, it honestly makes the whole thing so much easier. Um, and then this gap that's missing, we already added in over here. So we're not actually losing anything over there as long as we come out from this point instead of that point. So then we need to decide like how far out we really want this to flare, like on the sides and stuff. I'm going to go ahead and connect the waist to the high hip point on the side. And that comes out at a little bit of an angle. If you want that to come out even further, it can. Um, but before I get too much into looking at the angles and stuff, I'm going to hit save real quick. Um, this is not a basic bust, so I have to add in seam allowance to this. Um, and those are at, like our width points. We don't add seam allowance top to bottom. But like the bust, I don't want that to be like super tight on my bust. So I'm going to add at least half an inch there. There we go. Same thing with like the waist. I'm probably going to add a whole inch, if not like, let's say 0.75, minimum 0.75. Make sure it's comfy. Um, and then my high hip right here, I'm going to add, um, again, at least three quarters of an inch, if not an entire inch. There we go. Um, and then my hip arc, I can leave where it is. That's more of a visual to make sure that all of this is going to be bigger than my hips so it doesn't get stuck there because then I can always add up here if I need to or angle out further. Um, but otherwise, these angles all look really nice. The only thing that we definitely have to fix now is that we've lost this gap here in the bust. And we need to add that um, either over here or make that curve out better. And what I think I'm going to do is make that curve better. So I am going to delete that line. I'm going to hit curve. Go back to the curve. Let's start at the shoulder. And I'm going to go once at the top of the shoulder, twice at the top of the dart. And I am going to 
just bring it straight down. And you'll see we're still losing that, aren't we? I'm going to take it down to this center dart. Um, that's going to add quite a bit below the bust. I'm just really worried about how much we're losing here. Now, you know what we're going to do? I'm going to do um, a point on this line. So this line is going through that dart hole, which is great. But I'm going to, instead of starting all the way up here, I'm going to start closer, and that should really help, actually. Um, so we're going to start it from this curve, actually. Let's grab this point on a curve, click that, and the curve name is right here. I'm going to type that in, splice A28 underscore A21. I'm going to say divided by 2. Yeah, that's what I want. Okay. And then let's try this differently with a curve. Start there. Come down to that dart. I'm going to go to this. Uh, let's try it. Why not? I'm going to do twice at the dart. And then I'm going to take it to the bottom of the dart. Happy with that? Yeah, that looks really nice. Um, okay, so now we have an outer curve one and an inner curve one. This is beautiful. All right. And then this line up here, if you ever decided that you want that further to the neck or further to the shoulder, again, you can still adjust that. So divided by two. Actually, I kind of like how that looks. Actually, I kind of look how that looks a little better. I'm going to keep it as that. Um, again, you can see all this happening in the line, so feel free to adjust stuff and move things around. And that's kind of the beauty of this to me. If I draw this out on paper, I just feel like it starts to be so chaotic with a lot of the lines. But on here, like, I don't have to take all this time to race and move, and I can just put math in and watch things move around. I love it. Um, okay, so I'm going to keep this. I really like how this is looking. Um, for this part of it, we've already added these adjustments. Um, we just need to add the rest of the skirt length, because obviously this is a shirt at this point. It's only going to the high hips. Um, we definitely need to get past the hips and down to, like, the knee length or something. And then we could also adjust the neck hole a little bit, so I'm going to do that as well. But I'm going to draw the line down to the knee now. So I'm going to start back at the waist, because it was a waist measurement. Come down, angle's 270. Oh, I want to almost hit 270 even that time. <laughs> Let's type in knee to knee. And this, I want to end um, three inches above my knee. So I'm going to hit minus three. OK. And I'm going to label this. I'm going to see if it'll let me do minus three. Knee minus three. If not, I'm going to make it. No, it won't. So I'm going to call it knee. I'm going to get rid of the minus 3, and then I'm going to go up 3. Only because if I use this pattern for somebody else and they don't want it to go 3 inches above their knee, <laughs> um, I can adjust that. But I want to know for a fact that that is the knee, and this is 3 inches up. Okay. Um, all right. So what I am going to do at this point, this angle coming down, I want it to stay at that angle coming down so it creates a nice A line. If you want this to be more like figure formed, you could definitely bring this straight down and curve out the hip and have it more of like a pencil skirt um, dress that has this whole um, princess dart down it. Um, so then I would just box this out literally and like curve out your hip. And that would be really pretty too. Um, but I want this to be like an A-line. It's just that's the shape that I feel like flatters me the best and I enjoy wearing it. So we're going to keep this line going. I'm going to grab point of distance and angle. And actually, before I do that, I want to know the length from A9 to A35. And I don't think it's already there, so I'm going to hit line, connect A9 to A35. Go back to point. I'm going to do this point of distance and angle. Okay, grab the bottom of where those kind of V together. I'm just going to bring it this way. So the length, that's what I want, A9 to A35. So length of line, sorry, here comes. A9 to A35, OK. And then F of X, the angle is going to be this angle, which should be A21 to A3. So angle of lines, A3, A, ooh, that's going on. Um, oh, no, that's not 3. It's 33. <laughs> there we go. 21 to 33. There we go. Beautiful. So that's that skirt part. 
Um, if you want, you can just connect that in a straight line, and then when you cut this out, curve it out nice. That's totally acceptable. If you want to curve this out, go for it by all means, but I kind of just leave it as an angle and make it nice when I cut it. Um, okay, so point at distance and angle. I'm going to grab that point again. This time it's coming off of this line for the length. My angle is 22 to 33 now, so angle of line, 33, 22 to 33. Voila. And my length is going to be A9 to A35 again. Length of line, 35. Okay, okay, ta-da. All right, so now we just need this last one. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. Grab that, bring it down. All right, angle this time is 15 to 10. Angle of lines, 15 to 10. Okay, length. Thirty-five again, like the line. Thirty-five. Da da da. There we go. Um, I'm just gonna connect those basically with a line. Um, you don't even have to connect them. You can do it when you're just grabbing your detail piece. But other than adjusting the neck, now we have technically this skirt, which is super exciting. Now for this dress, I actually want this to be a pinafore. <laughs> Um, and I can just leave it like this if you want, go for it. But I'm just going to go ahead and create the neckline I want for a pinafore real quick. So I want this to be like a kind of, sort of, not super deep v-neck, but like probably down to the, right at the, like above bust line. Let's go like halfway through this curve and just pull it down. Let's go to the curve. Segmenting simple curve. Okay, again, this is the name of it. So I'm going to say splice underscore neck underscore... A6, let's say divided by 2 and see where that lands me. Divided by 3? Oop, wrong way. Um, times 2 thirds. There we go. Now I know it's at the side of the neck. Okay, now let's see what happens if I connect that as a line to the above bust. Oh, that's like perfect. Okay, I like that. That's nice. That's nice. Okay, <laughs> we'll take this. Um, okay, also the armpit, I'm going to drop an inch because I want to be able to wear a shirt under this. Ta -da. Um, going off of that, I also want this to curve to be less dramatic. So, like, that makes that whole arm bigger. I don't really want that whole arm to be bigger. I'm going to start to get some gaps. So, I need to get this to curve in a little bit better. And actually, let's just undo all of that. Um, undo, undo. Um, I'll just go ahead and draw one on. That way I don't mess up the whole thing and I can change that later if I want. So armpit, let's just go down to bust. Why not? I'm going to say one inch. Okay. And I'm going to just draw a new curve. That might be easier. So shoulder. There, there, there we go. That's much better. I don't want a huge armhole. That's not what I'm trying to do. I just want it to come down further. And if it stays out here and comes down further, it's just going to be a huge armhole. So I'd rather do this. I can always make it bigger if it's like squeezing me somewhere. But this will um, lay on my body a lot nicer, I guess is what I'm trying to say. That's it, save. Um, very nice. I'm happy with this. Oh, and I accidentally undid that neckline, so let's fix that. So this is good. I'm super happy with this. Let's go ahead and add it into the details. So first I'm going to go to the details and delete what's already here. Click, delete, click, delete, click, delete. Yay. So now let's create a pattern piece. Let's hit detail. Workpiece tool. And actually I'm going to zoom out a little bit. Zoom, 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 zoom. Zoom, zoom, zoom. There you go. All right, work piece tool. Remember, we got to work clockwise. So I'm going to start at the neck, and I'm going to hit that point that I created in the neck. Oh, I can still zoom in. Okay, that point I created, I have to hit that for it to not grab the entire curve. Otherwise, it'll grab the entire curve, which would be wild. Come down here to the shoulder. Okay, this is where we can just grab this curve, and we're doing the left side first. Um, and then we're going to come down to the bottom. Back to the center, make sure I got everything. Yay! Look at 
look at this, enter pin or four, pin or four, oh my goodness, pin or four, hit enter, and that'll add it. Let me double check, beautiful. Let's do the other side, workpiece tool. Okay, start at the center, shoulder. This new armhole curve, um, waist, out here, in here. I'm gonna zoom back in to make sure I don't miss all these points. Okay, I need to come back into this waist bit, and then hit this curve. I'm gonna hit this point too. Okay, nice. Okay, I'm gonna hit enter. And that looks kinda goofy. Why does that look goofy? Oh, is that backwards? Okay, let's hit reverse. Oh, there we go. I bet this one's goofy too. I think that's backwards. Yeah, it is. Reverse. Oh, there we go. Beautiful. Okay, I'm happy with that. That looks really nice. Hit OK. Details. Zoom fit best. Oh, look at that. I'm just going to drag. Ah, that's not what I wanted. There we go. Okay, this is a side piece, the center piece. This is lovely. Hit save. Let's work on the back. Alright, bodice back. The sleeves we don't really have to do anything with other than we made this hole bigger. So if you're putting sleeves onto this dress, you're going to need to make these as much like taller as you made this come down. If this is coming down, the sleeve has to come up. If you want this to come further this way, the sleeve has to come further this way. If that makes sense. Hopefully that makes sense. Let's work on the back now. So we have like two. We already are going to go from the top shoulder. This is going to be fun. They're going to have like two angles we're going off of. Let's see how this works. Um, I need to make these angles match up to each other way better. Go to point. Let's square off this one to up here. And then I'm going to like divide it by two. And we'll see how that curve works. Okay, let's just play with the curve and see what happens. Okay, we're going to start on the left side. So we're going to go top to bottom. So top, I'm going to grab this. Should I grab it? No, I want to grab here. Two, three, bottom of the dart, four. Ooh, that looks really nice. Why did it not grab that? Bottom one, click this one twice. Click, click, pop. Oh, that's really nice. That is like perfect. Look how much that dart is like the same as this one. And this dart is on point. Yay, beautiful. Okay, I'm okay with this. <laughs> Zoom out a little bit. Um, all right, now this is my high hip. Um, I need to come down to the hip. So point, grab this, start at, where's my waist, right here. Down to the hip, 270, ooh, not 07, 270. Length is going to be my measurements. Um, waist to hip. is meowing at our toy that he keeps getting stuck under the couch. Um, okay, now let's grab that, come to the right, angle is zero, length, so that is going to be hip arc back, hip arc back, divide it by two, okay, nice, I don't necessarily want the waist to come out, I want to actually curve around my bum because that's the part that's going to stick out. I'm going to square off the new waist with the high hip or the hip, not the high hip. And I'm going to divide that by two. Okay. He, he, he. Okay, so I'm going to draw a line so I don't get lost. This part's going to go come to the center of that. And this part, I'm going to add on this part. So actually I can square that off again. Okay, square this off still. There we go. Okay, now I'm going to add this over here so that this comes out further. And actually I'm going to add half of that on each side. So I'm going to make that in half again. Hopefully you can follow what my brain is doing right now. Okay, so I divided it in half again because I just need the half distance. So now I'm going to make a, dis a point at distance along line. From the center, go to the left. That distance. So length B44 to 40. Length of line B44 to 40. I'm gonna, 
highlight that and hit Control C for copy. Okay, okay. Do the exact same thing the other direction. Control V is paste. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> part it goes out yay that's a much better angle Ooh, and actually that's like a pretty similar angle to this side that looks really nice that's gonna be super flattering yay for symmetry <laughs> save hooray i like this this is looking really nice doesn't that just make you happy all right so now we need to come down to the knee Let's start at the waist, come down to 70. The length is going to be knee. Okay. And I don't want this to be called B for 7. I'm going to say B knee for back knee. Okie doke. Now I'm going to come up from the knee back up to the waist or wherever you want it to go, honestly. It's fine. But that the length I want to be this knee to A35 so that on the front of the skirt, if I'm like, oh, I don't want this to be three inches, I want it to be one inch. Or if somebody else wants me to make them a skirt and they're like, I want it 12 inches above my knee. Um, hopefully, I, I, I'm not judging, whatever. Make it as short as you want. Um, but it'll even out the front and the back without me having to mess with anything. Okay, so length of line, A35 to knee. Now those will always be the same, which is great. So great. Okay, and now we need to do line. We need to know from this, because this is where we're drawing down from. So from there to this new point is the distance I need to know. Okay, now make a line from that. This one is going to keep coming this way. The angle is going to be... This is hard to see back there. I think that's B17. Angle of line, B17 to B46. There we go. Okay. And the length of that, length of line, is this B39 to 47. Yay! And I'm going to highlight that and Control C copy so I can start pasting that in now if I want. All right, let's do the same thing. This one. is going to control V paste. Bam. Alright, one more. Outside one. What is this angle? Oh, 16 to 41, I think. Angle. B16 to 41. B16 to 41. Length. Pay. Bam. Yay. Okay, let's connect all this. Um, actually, first, I need to bring this armhole down an inch because this armhole came down an inch. And so this one also has to, or this is going to be real funky the way this fits around my body. And it will not be comfy because it's going to feel like it's always trying to shift itself somewhere because the front and the back don't line up. All right, so we need to drop this armhole down the same distance we dropped that armhole down. So point it distance along line. Our armhole thing, let's just bring it down to like the bust. But I want it to be the same. So f of x, and this is armpit. What did we decide? Armpit to a40. So length of line a40, armpit a40. Okay, okay. And that's this one. So let's instead of b51, let's call that like new armpit. Why not? And then I need to draw a new curve onto that. So curve tool. Start at the top. Um, nice. I can always make that deeper if I need to, but I want to make sure I don't add too much. I can always cut more. I can never, like, add fabric back. And again, and since I'm making this lower, I don't need this to be quite so big. Safe. Cool. Because I'll have movement from this side, so that'll actually look really nice. Hopefully. We'll see. Again, I'm not going to do any facings on this, because I'm going to do my facings from the actual pattern. Um, but I am going to add this pattern piece <laughs> so that it comes out okay. All right, let's say detail, add pattern piece. Let's do the left side first. So that, let's grab that neck hole curve. Let's start at the outside. 
side and grab the outside curve, scroll down here, and I want to come to the outside and back to the inside. Let me scroll out. Zoom out. If you hit control and zoom the roller thing on your mouse, this will zoom in and out if you have a mouse that you're using. Hit enter. That looks beautiful. Muy bonito. Um, okay, let's do the right side now. So I'm going to scroll in a little bit, grab this workpiece tool. Okay, I'm just going to start with the curve on the outside. And then grab up the shoulder. I want the lower armpit curve. I'm going to go to the waist, scroll down, outside, outside angle, enter. Move this out of the way. I'm going to zoom out. Ooh, that looks really nice. Seeing this come together. <laughs> Same detail. Yay! Okay, I'm just going to spread this out. You know what, though? On the front, um, this needs to overlap with the other side. So I actually need to add something to that. So let's go back to that. I'm going to click this and delete it to force myself to do this correctly. Let's go back to the bodice front. Because I want this to button, they can't come up next to each other. It's not going to zip. If this was a zipper, they could just come up next to each other. But they have to overlap. You're going to have to decide how wide of these buttons you want to put on. Um, I would say like three quarters of an inch, half an inch, three quarters of an inch, maybe an inch if you're like doing real statement buttons. Um, but if we do like three quarters of an inch and we have one inch of total overlap, we should be solid. So this needs to come over half an inch. So we're going to grab this point, bring it over. Angle is 180. Length, we're going to say 0.5. OK. And we're going to redo that line. I'm literally going to delete it so I don't actually click it. And I'm going to go from this outside part up to the neck now. Yay, that looks nice though. Um, but that way, this is going to come over. And when we mirror this on the other side, the other side is going to go like wee come to here, which also is going to raise up this neck though. So if you want this lower, now is the time to change that. So like maybe connect it to, let's like box this off with the armpit maybe. Like do you see what I'm saying? The other, Like where this crosses, the neckline is where it's going to cross with the other one coming this way. So you're raising the neckline. Um, so I'm just going to square off with the armpit, and let's try a line from there and see where that lands us. And actually, it goes straight through it, so I'm going to use that one instead. There we go. Ta-da. Okay, but now we also have to square that off with the bottom of the skirt, because the bottom of the skirt also has to come out that far. So we don't want the front to be at some weird angle. Point, square. Okay, so how far we came out? Down to the bottom of the skirt. So now when we do this detail and this workpiece tool, start at this out point and grab the out point. Do you see what I'm saying? We're clicking that. And then up to that point. Don't forget that point. And then the curve in the neck. Then grab this. Grab this outside curvy thing. Not curvy thing. It's the dart. Um, and then we're going to drag this out here. And see, that's the outside point so that we actually have overlapping for buttons. If you also want buttons, if you don't want buttons, you don't have to do that part. And then hit enter. And that looks really, really nice. Okay, save details. Yay, that's what I want. Cool beans. All right, um, one last thing you could do, if you need it, you can add curve in the back, back here. Some people genuinely need this curve in the back. Um, and if that's the case, go ahead and add it to your pattern. You can always like add that in on your um, test fit if you need to. But otherwise, if you straight up know that you need that back here, go ahead and add it now. Um, otherwise, this is good. So on this one, what you're going to want to do, I'm going to link the video to how to print all this. But on this pattern piece, just add seam allowance the whole way around because nothing's getting cut on a um, fold or anything. Same for this um, front side. The back, you don't want seam allowance on this center back. Because that's I'm going to cut that on a fold so I don't have a seam down this center back. So seam allowance the whole way around, but make sure you don't put seam allowance on this line. We're going to cut that on the fold. This can have seam allowance the entire way around. Yay! And then you can sew it together.
I hope you enjoyed this. I hope this was helpful. Um, I would love to see what you make with this. Um, good luck. Bye.